Hey YouTube, my name's Ed. Welcome to the tech to boot YouTube channel and this is part three of my how to build a website from scratch series. So uh, if you haven't watched part one or part two, I recommend doing that uh, as we're going to build on and continue on to the concepts that we've learned before. Uh, today we're going to be talking about hyperlinks, how to create links on a web page to pages on your own website as well as other web servers. So let's get started. Okay, YouTube, I got Adam open. Again, the link is in the description for this, adam.io. Great editor, free to use, free to download for Mac and Windows. I recommend this for all your coding aspects. Um, I use Sublime Text for my day job, but I'm really growing on to Adam. So, <laughs> uh, to carry on today, we're talking about hyperlinks. So, I have my web page open that we created in um, parts one and two. If you didn't watch those or follow along, uh, just make a real basic website template and we're going to go ahead and make hyperlinks. So to create a hyperlink, you use what's called an anchor tag. Um, again, this is another tag that has acronyms that we talked a lot about with HTML, shorthand code for things. So you're going to create an opening A tag. So open, type the letter A, and that's it. And for now, we're just going to close it and put some text here. This is a hyperlink. Put an exclamation there. And just to separate it from everything else, um, I'll go ahead and put this in a section tag that we learned about in our last lesson. And put a heading here. Example hyperlinks. So hopefully I'm not moving too fast. I just put the hyperlink in a section. You can also put it in a div if you want, or a paragraph even. And I put a, a heading here just to represent what this is. And I'll put a, last but not least, a horizontal roll here, to separate it from everything else. And if I refresh my web page, example hyperlinks. This is a hyperlink. <clears throat> so. If you look at this, you can see obviously um, it's not clickable yet. And that's because we haven't told the link what to do or where to go yet. So to do that, um, we are going to use the ref attribute. Or um, what it, it stands for rather is um, hyperlink reference. <laughs> but again, it's an acronym. So you're going to type href equals and then a set of double quotes and change my keyboard layout here <laughs> i had it on international mode um, and for now i'm gonna put a pound sign in here and save and now if i refresh you'll see that this created a hyperlink and i can actually click on it but it won't really do anything yet but uh, this is part, or the first thing I want to talk about with hyperlinks. One of the first basic things you'll learn to do with them is use a pound slang or numeric slang. And when we do that and click a link, it will keep on the current web page but scroll back to the top. Now, um, uh, in the olden days, you could actually name other hyperlinks on a page and then reference them with that hashtag and if you click it it would scroll to wherever that other hyperlink is on the page um, but the name attribute that that references to has been depreciated <laughs> so uh, depreciated is a keyword you should learn if you're learning html or programming or anything and what it means is basically they're getting rid of it they're doing away with it so once they upgrade HTML and further it more and more, eventually that name attribute uh, will not be proper HTML anymore. But you could still use the um, hashtag symbol here to um, go back to the top of the page. And I like it because I use it as a placeholder. So if I'm creating a menu, for example, and I don't know where my links are going to go to yet, like I haven't created the other pages, and I'm just working on my template. Well, I use this as a placeholder. So now you know if you see this somewhere, it just um, takes you back to the top of the web page. If, and that's if you're scrolled down. If I, if this link was on the bottom and this was a page that exceeded how far the scrolls down, it would go back to the top. 
So, the next thing we're going to learn is how to hyperlink to another website. So to do this, we are going to create a link to Google. And I'm going to put these links in an unordered list, which we learned last week. So a UL, and I'll put my first link in the first item here that we created with a pound sign. Now, I'm going to create a second link, and we're going to link it to google.com. So to do that, we'll type https, double dot, uh, slash slash, google.com, and this is a link to Google. And close that list item, and close the unordered list, and I'll leave this on a few seconds. If I was going too fast, you could catch up. Um, so yeah, you could put links inside of list, and this is a good thing to learn because if you watch my last lesson, I told you that uh, lists are commonly used to create navigational elements on web pages. So this is something you might see a lot. Um, I'll save that now and refresh. There's our links inside of an unordered list, and if I click this one, it goes to Google.com. <laughs> so if you've done that, congratulations, you've created your first hyperlink to another web page. And I'll go back. Now, one thing I want to talk about is that, uh, if you noticed, we use the HTTPS protocol here. Um, that is required if you're linking to another website. You have to put the HTTP or HTTPS uh, to <laughs> further... Um, iterate on what I'm talking about, or reiterate rather, I'll save this. If I try to do that without that HTTPS protocol, I will get this. And if you were on a web server, it would generate a 404. Without that protocol, it is looking for a file called google.com on your computer or web server. So it's important if you're linking to another website or server, that you put that protocol in there. And it's gonna change depending on if that site has HTTPS or not, but the safe bet is to usually point it to HTTPS these days. And HTTPS, by the way, means that the site has SSL or a, um, an SSL certificate installed on it, so it's secure. So if I go back, now I fix my link and it will go. Okay, so we created the pound sign and a link to another website. Now, one thing I'll build on top of this Google link, um, I am going to add a target attribute. Uh, attributes, by the way, are all these things that go inside of HTML tags like car set and ref. These are called attributes. And by the way, if you get into JavaScript or jQuery or any JavaScript frameworks, um, you could create your own attributes and use those to hold data and other things for dynamic websites. Uh, but there are predefined ones like the ref for the car set. Um, there's IDs and classes, so there's a little tidbit for you to take away. Um, but uh, we're going to add another attribute here called target. And we're going to put equals. And as you can see, Adam <laughs> helps you cheat with... Uh, an IntelliSense feature where it tells you um, what type of things you can put in there. Blank, parent, self, top. Uh, for this, we are going to click blank. Um, if you don't have autocomplete, then you'll type that out manually. It's an underscore and a word blank, B-L-A-N-K. And save. Now, if I refresh and I click my link to Google, you will notice that it opened in a new tab. So that is what the target with the blank attribute does. It opens in a new blank tab to that website. And um, now, one thing to say about this, I like the target attribute uh, like this when I'm linking to other websites, but um, there is accessibility and um, standards that uh, don't like to use it anymore. Um, 
because it can confuse the user, especially if they're handicapped or whatever. Um, when you open that in a new tab, it breaks the back button. So once I'm on here, I can't go back to my website anymore. I have to go back to that tab. Uh, whereas when I didn't use the target, um, it stayed in my tab and I could use the back button. So that's something to keep in mind. Something that has to do with uh, GUI design and accessibility. And uh, it's good practice to not actually open that tab. But again, I like to, there are times where uh, customers or clients are going to say I want a link to go somewhere else without uh, taking them off my website. So the last thing I want to do is uh, show you how to create a link to um, another file or web page on your computer or your web server. So to do that, we will go ahead and create another web page. So I'm going to hit Control N for a new file. And I'm going to copy some of the stuff from my old web page here. In fact, I'll copy the whole thing. So we'll do this. And I'm going to erase everything in the body tag and just put a heading that says, this is my second web page, like this. And I'm going to save it and call it um, secondpage.html. And notice I'm also saving it where I saved my first file, the index. So make sure you do that for now till we get a little further and explain how hyperlinks work. Now, I'm going to go back to my index file. And in my menu here, Control shift d for my last lesson. If you're using Atom, you can duplicate a line of text. Um, if you don't, then you'll have to type this out manually. So I'll do that just for... Uh, the sake of practice and I'll put ref and and here I'm going to put the name of that page I just created second page .html. if you named it differently then put that name of that file in there and I'll put this as a link to my second web page uh, closing anchor and closing list item and I'll leave this here a second so you can catch up and see what I'm doing. And um, what this is going to do is allow me to create a link to other pages on my website. And notice that I left the protocol out, which we were talking about earlier, because I'm looking for a file on my current web server or computer. And now if I refresh this and I click this, there's my second web page. So if you've done that, congratulations. You know how to create a second page and get back, get to that page. And uh, if I hit the back button, it'll go back to my um, index. Now, um, let's say I want to go back to my first web page from the second one. <laughs> and that's an important um, GUI and design element, by the way. Um, you always want to have ways for people to get back to where they came from on the website itself. You shouldn't force somebody to ever have to use the back button. So on my second web page, I will create another link. I'll put it inside of a paragraph tag. Anchor, href for hyperlink reference. And we'll put index.html and go to my first web page. Or go back. And closing tag. And closing paragraph tag. Okay. I'll leave that there a second so you can catch up. And what this is going to do is just put a link back to the index. So if I refresh. And I click this. And there's my link back to the home page. If I click this. I'm back onto my index. So now you have an idea of creating second pages and how to link back and forth between those, as well as how to link to other web servers. Okay, um, I'm opening out them again. And one last thing I want to finish this lesson with is the um, title attribute. So not like the title up here, but the attribute and where it goes is inside of your anchor links. So, 
on my link to Google, I am going to add an attribute called title. T-I-T-L-E equals, and I'm going to put this is a link to Google. <laughs> there it is. Okay. And if I refresh and I mouse over to Google link, notice on my screen there is a gray text box that has that title text. And um, that's something you can use with anchor links. You can put a title attribute. And um, I seldom use it anymore, but um, it is a good um, accessibility thing. So people know uh, what a hyperlink does or where it's going to. It's just a little helpful thing you could put in there so one advanced concept we haven't uh, gotten into at all yet and won't for a while is web forms and um, on web forms sometimes people use anchor links to create buttons on those and uh, whatnot so um, the anchor link has a lot more functionality than just linking to web pages but that's its core use and what it's really used for um, and back in the olden days again, I've been doing this a long time. Um, like, you used to have to put the ref attribute, the hyperlink reference. Otherwise, you'd get like a validation error. And now in HTML5, um, I don't think you have to do that anymore. You can have hyperlinks without that. And you could use them for doing other things on a web page with JavaScript and jQuery and um, other frameworks. So, um, yeah, but uh, that's hyperlinks. And as we progress further along, you'll learn how to style those. So you could create little buttons out of them and um, use images with them. Um, again, the sky is the limit. You could do everything with CSS. So um, uh, you can make links look a lot more exciting than just having some purple or blue text color to them. Um, anyway... I think that about wraps uh, lesson three for now. So we learned a lot about hyperlinks and creating another web page and how to link back and forth between web pages. So uh, check out part four. And if you've got this far, thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe if you like my videos. I appreciate it. Uh, drop a comment with ideas or suggestions or um, other videos you'd like to see. And until then, see you next time.